Hi, and welcome to the second part of our tutorial on color wheels. In the first part, we discussed how color wheels work, for example, what tonal ranges they affect, and the differences between this classic color grading tool and the new log wheels layer found in Color Finale 2 Pro. In this second part, we will explore automatic color grading and go over several examples, including matching our footage with a still from a film using only the color wheels. There will be a lot of interesting examples coming up, so sit back and subscribe to our channel to catch the next practical color grading episode. Let's head straight into an example. Previously, we saw how color balance can be manually adjusted. This time, we'll see how easy it is to set it with Color Finale 2's automatic tools. So first, let's open up color wheels from the layers panel. Next to each wheel is an eyedropper. By selecting and using them on areas in the image, we can automatically adjust for brightness and color balance. But if we pick the wrong regions, we might get a false result. These adjustments can always be manually tuned afterwards. But the fastest and most accurate result starts with the correct approach. So first, we need to figure out which areas are safe to use to accurately sample color and brightness. On the top left, we have the RGB Parade scope open. You might remember that this scope shows levels from 0 to 100 IRE units with the shadows at the bottom and highlights at the top, and the midtones in the middle. This is the same for each color channel, red, green, and blue. When all the waveforms are at the same level, it means that the colors have been balanced. If we use the image analysis tool and choose, for example, the rectangle, then we can use this shape to isolate parts of the image. Only the colors inside will be reflected in the scopes. So moving this shape around helps us see where the highlights, midtones, and shadows are. Let's select the eyedropper above the lift wheel, aka the shadows, and see how this lets us evaluate the image one more time. While using the eyedropper, a tooltip shows color information of the spot our cursor is hovering over. This is displayed in the form of RGB levels, similar to the RGB parade we have on the left, but for a specific point. The brighter the area, the greater the values are of each color channel. Lower levels, more shadows. So this readout also makes it convenient to determine shadows, midtones, and highlights. After this, we need to find a spot on one of the darker regions that looks to be neutral. For example, this apron is obviously a shade of blue, so it would not be a good choice for our selection. However, these display shelves are much better. The automatic color balance tool compares red, green and blue channels and sets the appropriate balance and levels for the shadows. Let's click on this point. The shadows become darker and we see the color values change. Now we'll balance the highlights. Most of the highlights are concentrated towards the top of the image. But we don't need to pick the very brightest points. It's enough to pick a reasonably light area. The best match for us here is this light grey color. We bring the eyedropper over and can see that it shows high RGB values and that the color is a reasonably neutral grey. So for the last step, let's work the midtones. These values are between the highlights and shadows, with smooth transitions at either end. Beginners sometimes find it difficult to make out where these regions start and end. If we take a closer look at the RGB parade, the trick is to find areas with the most contrast, or any of these clear stepped areas. With the help of image analysis, it's easier to find them. And of course, we can use the eyedropper again to check the values in our chosen area. The value readouts of the midtones could be in the middle or slightly higher. We can lift the shadows a bit so that the image has slightly less contrast. And this is the result we get. Let's take another example. 
Sometimes the conditions are more difficult. For example, here is a shoot that was filmed at dusk. It will be difficult for automated tools to deal with this, since all of the image tends towards the blues. But let's try and see what happens. The shadows are the easiest to work with initially, since there are so many of them here. Now let's pick the highlights. There aren't many, since the image is on the darker side, but let's sample something from the clouds. And now the midtones. If the result of the automated tool isn't ideal, for example, if we still see the waveforms diverging like we have here, it's always possible to fix this manually. Notice how the midtones are not at the same level. The red is stronger than the other colors. But right in the foreground, we have the talent's skin tone. We'll need to pay special attention to the skin tones. Let's sample a small area of skin with image analysis and open up the vector scope. If you have the skin tone indicator enabled, you can see that the skin falls onto the ideal skin tone line, even if at first it aimed in the opposite direction. Skin tones are one of the most important colors in shots such as these. We have a whole episode dedicated to working with skin tones, so check it out if you like. Now, we can always continue playing with the color or brightness of any tone, but we should always keep monitoring the color balance as any change in brightness or saturation can change the overall balance. Now let's take a look at two more examples that are from the same shoot. We can tell by the lighting that these shots were shot at around the same time, but still they have their differences due to the changes in brightness and color balance. If we match the color balance and brightness in the right way, these shots will look better next to each other in the edit. First, let's find the highlights, midtones, and shadows. We can use image analysis or use the eyedropper straight away to find shadows. So back to color wheels, selecting the eyedropper, and finding an area in the shadows. Next, moving on and finding the highlights. And now midtones. And here is the result we get. We'll go over the second shot in the exact same way. Let's use the eyedropper to select the shadows, the highlights, and then the midtones. Let's check our work by referring back to the RGB parade and perhaps doing some manual tweaks at the end. All done. Have a look at the comparison between the shots. The original is above and our results are below. We didn't strive for any particular look, but at the same time, after using the automated tools, we have achieved the right color balance and brightness. And this is already enough to make the shots look similar. The matching process is all about making colors the same across multiple shots. With our next example, let's get deeper into matching. Let's take as our example this shot from a film. If you recognize this film, leave a comment below. Notice the lighting. The background is pretty dark and goes into the cyans. In the foreground, our hero is well lit and with a good separation. They are well into the midtones and highlights. And these highlights tend slightly into the yellows and oranges. We'll aim to match some of our own footage with this shot. The lighting setup is similar to the one used in the film. The foreground is also lit a bit better than the background and the sky is pretty dark. But the colors are way off from our reference film shot. So let's match this. For this work, we'll be comparing several shots at the same time. For this, we bring up the split view by going to Window, Show in Workspace, Comparison Viewer. Another viewer shows up on the left. We go over to the film shot and click Save Frame. So now our reference is pinned to the side. Let's return to our shot. Now we need to set up the RGB Parade waveforms again. To compare the waveforms of the two shots, it'll be convenient to show them underneath the viewers. This can be done with going to View, 
vertical layout, and the same thing for the other viewer. First show video scopes, and if they pop up on the left, bring them underneath the viewer in the same way. Now that we can clearly see both shots and the scopes side by side, we can begin matching. We head over to the layers panel and create a new color wheels layer. As you may remember from the previous episode, RGB Parade goes well with the sliders mode. Let's change the overall brightness first. Look at the minimum brightness value of the reference shot. It's at around 2. This means we lower the brightness of our shot down to that level. Next, let's evaluate the highlights. Have a look at this raised bit. This is our hero. The brightest parts of the image are in red, at 71 units. So we raise the master brightness on the highlights to 71. We'll leave the midtones until later when we adjust each color channel separately. So let's go back to look at the shadows of our reference shot, specifically to check where the red is in relation to the other channels, green and blue. We see that the red is lower than both of them. So let's return to our shot and adjust each channel accordingly. First the red, then the green, which is at six, and finally blue, which is about the same as green. This was for the shadows. Now let's repeat this process for the highlights. Red, green, and blue. We can now work on the midtones. Most of the time it's enough to find the lines of contrast in the midtones like these and to continue from there. We shouldn't forget to also look at our image and use our own judgment instead of totally relying on the scopes. After this, let's check the shadows again. And again, the highlights. We'll add a bit of contrast. And this is our result. We can use masks and other tools to achieve a closer match. But in order to get a similar looking match, all we need are the color wheels. Hopefully by now you realize just how powerful color wheels can be. With their help, you can quickly set the contrast, saturation and create unique looks. Automated tools are there to help you quickly achieve accurate brightness and color balance. And using the sliders mode, it is very convenient not only to adjust the color balance, but also to deal with all important techniques like shot matching. We will further cover matching using other tools in future episodes. If you have any questions about color wheels, please leave a comment. Show your support by liking and subscribing to our channel. See you again soon. Goodbye.